This is the Criterion Creeps podcast, and tonight we're talking about The Pornographers from 1966. Mm. Yes, RJ. Directed mm. by Shohai Imamaru. I'm just butchering that, I'm sure. Sure. And the synopsis from Letterbox. Subu makes pornographic films. He sees <laughs> nothing wrong with it. They are an aid to a repressed society, and he uses the money to support his landlady, Haru, and her family. From time to time, Haru shares her bed with Subu, though she believes her dead husband, reincarnated as a carp, disapproves. Director Shohai Maru has always delighted in the kinky exploits of lowlifes, and in this 1966 classic, he finds subversive humor in the bizarre dynamics of Haru, her Oedipal son, and her daughter, the true object of her pornographer boyfriend's obsession. Imaru's comic treatment of such taboos as voyeurism and incest sparked controversy when the film was released, but the pornographers has outlasted its critics and now seems frankly ahead of its time. Uh, Do you think he wrote that himself? I doubt it. I doubt it. Um, That's all to say, porn making ain't easy. Well, you said it. It's the struggle. You know, it's the constant struggle. Of porn? So this is a movie that I bought on DVD back in like 2003, 2004. Sometime after, because it sounded fascinating. I I don't know if you know this about me, RJ, but Mm -hmm. I've always been drawn to sleaze, to filth, to like debauchery, but like through through a lens. I don't want to be there getting my hands dirty myself. I want to watch it from afar. I find it curious because... It, these depictions of this world are so far mm. removed from my own. I, but I'm curious how it exists because I like I couldn't fathom doing these things. But perhaps I like maybe secretly entertain these things, and I'm like, well, I'm not going to do anything about it. But I'll watch movies about these topics because uh, one of those like subgenres that I did definitely uh, seek out. Uh, probably around that period of time and over the next Mm -hmm. like five years was like documentaries on the porn industry, uh, porn making. I find that stuff really fascinating. The actual product themselves, it's pornography. Like there's like, it has one purpose, not that interesting ultimately, but the, the world itself, the economy, the, the societal life of pornographers, uh, right up my alley. This is this is this is my stuff. This is like very mm. much, I, and I feel like it's yours as well. You know, as as long time listeners would recognize, uh, this is like Bay Log Cinema. Mm. You know, you kind of remind me. There was this guy I knew once, and uh, whenever we would go out, like me, him, some other guys, he would always kind of say this thing because he was a uh, he was in a committed relationship, and he would start with that, and he'd say, "Hey, listen." I don't want to like do anything, but if you find yourself (laughs) in a place that you're doing something, I just like to watch. Wow. Okay. And I mean, it was presented as a joke, but it was presented Mm, um, a number of times. Oh yeah. 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 And so when you were just describing how you like to see things through a lens, my first gut reaction was like, that sounds exactly like this fine young man that I knew one time in my life and how he presented the offer the offer the offer with the implication the implication the criterion cox i believe is a, a side podcast that's uh, i think actually last week there was mention of cox and we never brought it up or i forgot to that seems like so long ago i know that was it does. the uh well, it was lola and it well, was i mean t- there was the actual cock holding in it but i think uh either vova or the one before they actually said like they said the word oh. and i was like "Ooh, i should screenshot c- that for c- that c- fire cold. instagram yeah you, you should have uh, it's too late now it's unfortunate I'll never find it well so anyways you're a pervert Tell so me more about that. right well i'm like but not in practice in theory sure. in th- sure. I'm, a, I'm a poor i'm a pervert in theory so i watched sure. this movie back then um uh-huh. and i remember not being super like like thrilled by it it just seemed like oh this isn't what i wanted this wasn't like what i imagined from this like a 1966 japanese movie called the pornographers Mm -hmm. i was thinking like this would be like the seven samurai of like films about pornography but it it wasn't it wasn't that and i hadn't seen like a ton of japanese movies i I wasn't familiar Mm -hmm. with like the pinku genre um and now i'm a i'm a hardened 
pervert, and I've oh. and I've seen all wow. walks of Japanese cinema. And so coming mm-hmm. back to this was quite interesting for the very first time in you know fifteen years. Mm-hmm. And uh, I I was I was more on the same wave now as what uh, Imaru was going for. I've read a lot mm-hmm. more. Um, even like Japanese manga that's kind of uh, depicts this type of world. Uh, it's like the whole, like, was it uh, Jikika, Jikiga, G A or G E K I G A? Uh, it would be something. Like, like, yeah. It would be like something yeah. that's published out of uh, Garo uh, magazine. So, like something okay. like Saichi Hayashi, Red Colored Elegy, or something like that. Uh, mm-hmm. Maybe even like some of Tezuka's, uh, some of Tezuka's more serious stuff. So, I was like prepared. I, I knew what this was and watching, I was like, oh. I t- absolutely recognize this because mm-hmm. this so this is set in Osaka, and yeah, we're we're kind of following the the trials and tribulations of this this sad bastard who's just trying to make a living. Hmm. You know, he's picking up uh, his performers at train stations, prostitutes, br- uh-huh. dr- taking them out to the hills, and uh, we never actually see sex in this movie. Uh, no, there's the implication. What? Right. But we never actually, for a movie called The Pornographers, there's actually yeah, you, never like, there's really no nudity. There's no. There's almost a kiss. Right. See, that, that's fascinating, right? Isn't yeah. it? You got to admit. Okay. Well, I, I was kind of, uh, yeah, continue. So, yeah, we never even, we never get that shown. Um, mm-hmm. So it's like the movie like plays like it is a black comedy. This movie's got some uh, pretty amazing lines of dialogue that I'm sure you were on and uh, screen capping. <laughs> sure. I mean, you you could find some of those on the Instagram. Okay. That's not totally true. I guess we get the orgy. We do get the orgy mm-hmm. scene, but it's sort of like yeah, it's, it's happening. It's pretty it's, modest. It's, it's, it's pretty modest. I've seen crazier. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, I mean, Always Sunny in Philadelphia, I think, had an even crazier orgy than this and, one. And a buffet, at least. You know, people yeah. get hungry at these things. Well, it might not be what you expected, but at least there's food. That's right. Right? So, yeah. He, so, this super uh-huh. guy, he's just like, you, you got to watch out for the cops. You got to watch out for, you know, the Yakuza who are, like, looking mm. for easy money. And they'll be like, yeah, mm-hmm. we'll, we'll pay you this much for it, even though you'll be at, working at a loss. But you got to keep making that stuff. Keep making that smut while you're... Uh, like your your almost stepdaughters like making moves on you, mm-hmm. and uh, your kind of girlfriend she's like dying or going crazy a little bit of both allegedly yeah uh, while her like almost adult son's trying to like always get in between you and sleep with her pretty weird well, it's a story as old as time Jer yeah uh, you have a daughter who like heard you uh, when she was a little girl going into her mom's bedroom and hurting her and then she runs away and gets hit by a car and then years later you wind up laying in that bed and start licking those wounds while she sleeps i mean who who can't relate to this Hmm. i mean i know you surely have had many situations that were similar to say the least so similar so this movie is, uh-huh. I was about halfway through this movie and I was okay. curious. I'm like, how long is this? I never even thought to look. And I checked and went, holy shit, this movie's two over two hours long. And we're like, we're talking about like, what is this? A Star Wars movie now? <laughs> and uh, so I was like, uh-huh. oh. I'm like, well, damn. But uh, this movie moves at a pretty good clip. Sure. I, I, I did not feel like it was uh, bogging me down, even though like considering its title, its subject matter, the type of movie it is. You're thinking it's going to be a, a real in and out job, if you know what I'm saying. A what? And uh, it wasn't. It was. Uh, it's like this, like real movie that's like mm-hmm. setting up this like long play of uh, just how shitty things can get for this dude, and like mm-hmm. the the depths that he sinks, and like the situations that present themselves. Guys ripping him off of his camera equipment. Uh, things going missing. Oh, and then you get scenes, RJ, with uh, special young ladies. Uh, <laughs> doing what? Doing what? Well, they're they're cast. They're cast to do some uh some material also with their with their uh family pa- members. Family members. In one Ooh. particular scene, yes, that Ooh. is indeed what happens. Yeah, that that's uh that's some real greasy stuff right there. 
Uh, yeah, and tell me more about how you're a fan of greasy stuff, <laughs> as you mentioned earlier at the. Uh... Well, as uh, as we've as we've discussed, I mean, at length mm-hmm. over the years, I'm a fan of uh. the happiness of the Todd Solomon's happiness, <clears throat> and, and the, yeah, you are less so. Sure, for reasons, correct? Yeah, well, for your old your own hangups that perhaps prevent you from being a f- uh, fully individualized uh, completely person. genuine yeah like you can never you can never be legitimate. real with yourself i mean because maybe of the i'm the only one who is real have you ever considered that uh, maybe i'm the only one keeping it 100% emoji right real so i think so i would say that maybe like i think this movie's pretty good but mm-hmm. for me the last 10 minutes of the pornographers is pure film magic. As as uh, we get the the introduction of uh, I get, we're calling him Subu in this. I think in the notes, Jay Hoberman calls him Ogadi. Whatever, mm-hmm. the man. He, he he figures out. He's like, man, these women, they're nothing but trouble. They're, they're, it's like there's it's always something. My mm-hmm. life's miserable because of it. And he's like, well, why don't you just build one? <laughs> he's like, that's it. I'm going to build a Dutch wife. And then it's mm-hmm. like, and then it's kind of, it kind of turns into like the beginning of Lars and the real girl or whatever. And it's like, oh, he's going to build a real doll. And like, he's so happy. Mm-hmm. He's so like, he excitedly jumps out of his chair, arms up, face like the, the happiest he's been in this whole movie after like probably having sex with his like stepdaughter and like having everything taken away from him. His mm-hmm. wife's his wife, girlfriend's lost her mind. And now he's like, fuck it all. I'm going to, I'm just going to make my own wife. And then we get this like out of nowhere, five year jump in time. <laughs> he's living, mm-hmm. he's living on a boat just uh, offshore from the house. And uh, he's all, his hair's grown out. He's all bearded, but he has like, millionaires coming to like buy uh buy his models off of him buy his dolls so they can be sent off to antarctica this is like a technological innovation everybody's kicking down his door they they want the the secret recipe of these uh these mechanical women and uh, he's not selling he has no interest in this what does he need money for he's got his he's got his craft he's got his art he can finally it's something that he owns that no one mm-hmm. else can take away from him mm-hmm. and uh, well one thing leads to another and that that ship is sent to sail but he's but he's happy he's finally happy um i mean that's one way to look at it it's one way to look at it so <laughs> i i i posit that the pornographers is a a great success and uh, I just want to throw out there that uh, so this is based on a novel called The Pornographers oh, with, a, with a subtitle of An Introduction to Anthropology. What kind of anthropology? Social? The best kind. Hmm. Interesting. So, RJ, so you said that you posit that this is a good film. Yeah. Posit in what sense? <laughs> to that, who? To <laughs> To, to all, to, okay, to, to sure. all, to all good film watchers and goers, good film big boys, yeah, well, that love it, that love taking that ride. <laughs> okay, big film boys. All right, let's go. I, I, I wonder too how much uh, maybe Amaru uh, related to uh, the, the plight of this this character, because so apparently this, one would this, wonder this, from the essay uh, that the, that accompanies this Criterion. Uh, Booklet mm-hmm. here. Um, Jay Hoberman notes that in America, it should be noted, Imaru, Imamaru's own films were treated as exotic softcore porn. A dubbed sure. recut version of the estimable Pigs and Battleships was originally released as The Dirty Girls and later as The Flesh is Hot. What's it hot with? Oof. With passion. Is that I good? Would, I would wager, or maybe fever. I haven't seen it yet. I have the box set. Mm-hmm. I have this whole box set. One day we'll be getting to Insect Woman. Well, wait, what do you wait, 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 wait? What do you mean box set that we're gonna get to? Well, Imar, Im- Imaru's got a box set, a trilogy are, of are movies. Are those porn based also? No, no, they're more, um, they're more in that uh, Gekaiga uh, stream, like just like kind of like dark underbellies of Japan. The Gaigan stream, did you say? Gekika. Because he's got a dark underbelly. Oh, does he? Well, it's a buzzsaw, isn't it? 
RJ, what did you think of the pornographers? Well, Jer, it's uh, it's come up a few times in the last couple weeks, but in my current life right now, where I'm at, sometimes I've been involved in activities or things that have been going on, and I kind of just question to myself, what am I doing with with my life? Why are we here? What does it all mean? And I think that these are important questions to consider when watching the pornographers, Jer. Because in my mind, I was watching the show and I just kind of thought, what are we doing? Why are we here right now watching this movie? What is the point of this thing? Uh, I'll give you one thing before I go off here. Uh, <laughs> that, that last 10 minutes is pretty funny. I did get a kick out of that. Because uh, it almost seemed like it's it's been brought up again or before, but it almost seemed like the end to of an Always Sunny episode where a character <laughs> just completely yeah. decides to, it's like, you know what, whatever, I'll make a bride and uh, I'll make my own. And it's like uh, people come with like hordes of money and they're like, we, we got to have it. And he's like, you don't get it. It's not about money. It's about the principle, Jer. Here's a million yen. A I, million. I, I don't care doesn't matter don't give a shit because uh i just need to create my art and then uh the detachment of the uh the houseboat itself is something to behold mm -hmm. so uh that last 10 minutes is pretty special but uh i'm not gonna lie to you jerem <laughs> i had a pretty difficult time watching this because i not really? that the, the content i found upsetting or anything like that because it is pretty modest I was just kind of the whole time watching it. I was like, what is the point of this? <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? I was like, why, why does this exist? And it's kind of like what you said. You're like, well, is this like maybe this, this guy's personal account? And it's like, it could be, but I don't really, I don't really care to know it that, that intimately, you know, I don't really need to know that this guy's like in this strange, complicated family romance, you know, Jared, because and like I read that letter box synopsis too, where it's like ahead of its time, talking about taboo and things that other people would shy away from. And it's like I don't know if other people shy away from it. It's just like I don't, I didn't really think it was that interesting of a story, to be very honest with you, Jared. Like I, I really, in the first five minutes, I was like, ooh, this looks cool, because I thought it was gonna be a behind the scenes making of. It's like the guys that make the porn. I was like, that's a neat. There, that's a thing that exists in this world. And then it turned more into like his per the personal life. And I was like, that's fine too. Uh, but I didn't think it was as interesting, you know, because I, I kind of sided with you. I was like, I kind of wanted it to be just a be no. behind the scenes about people who make porn, which is like a movie that I recommended for you to watch this week, which I believe is the American remake of this movie. But mm. uh, I think you, you declined pretty wholeheartedly. And what film was that again, RJ? It was a uh, smash hit from uh, Criterion Collection alumni director Kevin Smith. Uh, Zach and Miri make a porno. Right. And why did you not watch that film, Jeremy? Because I'd seen it before. Oh, I thought because, you had not. Oh, no. See, you made the wrong conclusion. I, I, like I said, I've watched a lot of these types of movies, movies that are sure. about the, even like fictional accounts of people trying to make pornography. And I thought perhaps maybe Kevin Smith would be able to like redeem himself. Cause I've heard positive things about that movie. And then I watched and I went, no, this is a big old disappointment too. I like the time where I like in the movie when the drunk guy comes in and he goes, hug it, chuck it football. <laughs> it's a good thing. Me and Andrea say that to each other. Like I'm not even kidding. Maybe once every couple weeks. That explains a lot. Yep. So, anyways, it's no. Uh, and, uh, I mean, neither film are boogie nights, pornographers or no, Zach and Mary. I mean, boogie nights. No. I mean, it's, 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 it's like the it's it's one of the big statements of all of porn. I mean, them. it is, and I could go on a pedestal, a soapbox, and say that there would be no boogie nights without pornographers. But I feel like only an asshole would say something like that. You know what I mean? So here's the thing. I don't think there's anything bad about. 
like necessarily bad about this movie. There's nothing that I'm like, oh, I really don't like that. It's just I don't really find it very interesting at all. I think I mean, there's there's a bit of uh, playfulness with the carp. And I did like one scene where it was like, I think she's like dying and we, you we, get like the heaven carp angle. Yeah. Where it's like over top of her. I was like, that's right. cool. Yes. But uh, this movie's got some pretty fancy camera work going yeah, on. It, it does. Like some of the scenes are shot really like really nicely i like the carp scene i like the scene where it's all the dudes watching porn i was like oh yeah, yeah. well and I even want more of that and even the we have this like meta narrative of these same men who are watching it and you're getting their reaction to this which is always like uh, at one point i think i was like in high school still and maybe it was like that post 99 what a magical year of film maybe 2000 but i started like having this like thought I'm like maybe like movies that have like scenes where people are watching movies are always really good I don't know about always. No, but I like... that that is not the case now. I've seen yeah. Cinema Paradise. <laughs> what happens in that movie? Oh, the people that the movie that everybody loves, but all not not all crusty Jarrett. Yeah. Oh, uh, oh, Parasite. Paradiso or whatever it is. Oh, I thought you said Cinema Parasite. Oh, that Parasite. I don't. know. What's happening anymore? Pornographers. What? Yeah, it's it is not a movie that I enjoy is my review <laughs> but not 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 out of any like it's like i said there's nothing really bad about it it's got some really nice scenes it's just i find the story itself it's like i don't really care about this I see, I was thought, this i thought this scandalous? movie might have uh, turned you around on like the, the, the how funny it is at times like so the dialogue uh, it, is at, it is at times because like, 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 everyone's just so like pathetic and uh like they're, they're, they're the little things they're going for in this movie there's some stuff like that. Like the thing I put on Instagram today where he's just like, I really thought an orgy would cheer me up. Right. But it didn't like, there's things like that that I thought were, uh, that's, uh, that's a total RJ uh, line. That's something you, yeah. you, know, you say all the time to me. Yeah, I, I do. Um, I don't know. I felt like, I think you could say this about a lot of movies, but I felt like in the hands of like, say Wes Anderson mm. or, you know, like I was like, I think he would handle this a lot better. Because I, I just thought of Tenenbaums when I was watching this a little bit, you know? Oh, that scene where Royal and Margot? You... <laughs> well, well, I guess, know, I guess it should be Danny Glover. But... Sure, Danny Glover. Uh, or, you know, maybe Woody Allen. Yeah, there's a, there's a little bit of... Uh... No, not quite, not quite. Well, anyways, I uh, there there were things that I thought were funny, and I, I will give you the last ten minutes. Ooh. The last ten minutes was pretty good. It's just a, uh, like I said, no no mark on the movie itself. It was just I just didn't wasn't very interested in the story. I was kind of oh, like I don't really bad. care. Yeah, it's it is what it is. You know, I'm not mad at it. I don't think it's a bad movie. You, you, didn't, just, you, you didn't punch the screen. No, it's not like watching. Like, there's been movies that we've watched where I've I've been actively mad at the movie like my man godfrey you know <laughs> which, is there, bizarre, mo- which is also bizarre there's movies like that that like i actively dislike and i'm just indifferent to this it's there was things that i got out of it but the whole time or on the whole i was just like i don't really care that much you, you want to hear um uh, since i mean you don't really have anything particular to say about the movie one way or another not really um yeah. i want to hear some plot keywords from imdb <laughs> I would love to hit me. Female barber. Okay. She, I mean, the daughter definitely goes on to do that. Sure. Cuckolded wife. Yeah. That's yeah. huge. Stepfather, stepdaughter, incest. Okay. Sex with stepdaughter. Uh. Okay. Stepdaughter seduces stepfather. These are plot keywords. Okay. Uh, this is followed by carp. Nice. Economic boom. Okay. Mm, so, so that's in reference because to the Because of porn? Fact, well, no, no. It's because, uh, so this is like, weirdly enough, uh, another film that depicts a uh, post-war economic miracle era. So this is during the Japanese post-war economic miracle. Last week, we were watching movies with Fastbinder depicting the post-war economic miracle of Germany. Both axes, axes uh, countries. Uh, continuing on from economic boom, freeze frame. When does it freeze frame? Well, oh no, it does. It doesn't. It? it sure does. Yeah. Okay. We have. Yeah. Okay. Flashback. 
Uh, well, we get the flashbacks to when he, when his when his stepdaughter was young and when she gets uh, hit mm-hmm. by the car, and uh, then we have all, now we also have long take. <laughs> Where is there a long take in this thing? Actually, I don't even know. I can't remember one uh, okay. specifically. Group sex. The accurate. Blackmail. Uh, is there guilt? Yeah, sure. Film within a film? Yeah. Houseboat? Yeah. Inventor? Uh Uh-huh. Dysfunctional family? Yeah, definitely. Funeral? Uh, yeah. Brother-sister relationship? Mother-son relationship? Mother-daughter relationship? Topless female nudity? (laughs) Uh, is it, well, oh, because of the insane lady? Yeah, I guess. Oh, that's a bummer. Okay. <laughs> Common law marriage, mental mm-hmm. breakdown, euphem- yeah. euphemism. Oh. Oh. Ab- abortion. Oh, abortion. <laughs> uh, that was meant. That was brought up. It was impotence, yeah. juvenile yeah, sure. delinquent, eavesdropping, sex with stepfather, mm-hmm. incest. Well, I mean, finally. I, well, I, yeah. Mental retardation. What? Hold up. Where was it? When was that an issue? Well, it's a keyword, and it does pop up in the movie. When? The one girl who who has to be calmed down with the lollipops. Oh, right. <laughs> okay, I know what you mean. Yeah, that that sequence. Ooh, boy. Ooh, oh, boy. Oh, with the uh, the father. Uh... Yeah, wearing the mask, and they, they keep having to make the scenes more and more simple. To, they just go down to a, a good old home invasion. And it's like, well, well, she's good, and they say she's good at one thing. Yeah, and tell me again, why? How? What, what did you say when you started about this movie that bet good for all or something? In to that sense. And uh, right. heading toward the bottom, oh, we, a sex doll. There we go. There's a, there's several others. It's good. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, a, it's a good one. Uh, yeah. Want to find out who hates there's... this movie? <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, sure. I would. I'd love to hear because I mean, I. Yeah, tell me about who hates this movie, Jeremy. Grace. Grace okay. does, get, but you know what? These are the lowest ratings, and they're two stars. Um, yeah. So this... I would have figured there'd been more hate, to be honest. I guess no one watches this movie, even though it's got such a great title. Mm. I mean, you can't Here argue. You I mean, if A twenty four put out a movie called The Pornographers, we'd all be lining up. Well, I mean, if it was starring like Ben Foster and uh, Ben Forrester, his brother, mm-hmm. the Big Bens. The Big Bens. Big yeah. Ben Boys. The Big Ben Boys. Yeah, surely. Surely. So Grace says, there's a lot of time this felt like it was treading water, but every 15 minutes or so, there'd be a shot or sequence that was absolutely sublime. I don't know about sublime, sublime. in that sense. Sublime. <laughs> sublime. Not a ton of five-star films. A lot of stuff uh, that we're going to be watching okay. in the coming weeks. The Silence, Through a Glass Darkly, those types of things. Five stars to The Hidden, which is uh, pretty wild. That movie is pretty good. Like, you know, The Alien Hidden? Mm -hmm. It's a good show, but I don't know if it's five stars. A half a star to El Topo. And then when we we go to one star films, things like Three Billboards, Close Encounters, Hey Gazooza, and The Favorite. Oh, no. How, the one thing we totally forgot about because I skipped over was because I didn't even think about it was virginity was mentioned as a keyword and went oh yeah there's that whole thing with the uh, the one customer to replace who, the who really wants a a virgin finally because he's always like I'm always coming in second place I really want a virgin finally so he goes down to the local brothel the whoremonger mm-hmm. and uh, he sets her up with a woman who's just had a baby and uh, he's like give well, me can give, fix that. give me a few weeks mm-hmm. and you're like I don't know what that means. Well, Jared, if you don't if you don't understand, I can't. You're not ready for me. And, to explain and of course, it to you. Uh, you get this amazing scene where he's uh, hand delivering this girl wearing a schoolgirl outfit, he's asking, "How's the baby?" And then he sends her off into her uh, her uh, meeting with the the man in question. 
What do you think happens from there? This the sex. The sex happens. The sex? Yep. Uh, next up we have Connor Bateman with two stars. Despite okay. some interesting visual absurdity and dark humor, frame within frames especially, it's such a plodding film, almost actively uninteresting throughout. It moves through mostly simplistic and obvious plot points with a frustratingly languid pace. I don't know about like obvious plot points, but you know, you know, Jared. So Connor Bateman is a man after my own heart. Listen to some five star films, Jared. Punch Drunk Love. The Truman Show, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. That's right. That's right, Jer. Uh, there's a few others in here, movies that you'd probably like. But why don't we go over to those, uh, oh, those no half-star films? Dang. Damn. There's only six one-star films. One of them is Next with Nicolas Cage, which I actually thought was an okay show. All these other things, I have no idea what those are. One and a half stars. Uh, uh, what is that? What was that movie we just watched? Rise of Skywalker. Wildlife with Jake Gyllenhaal. I don't know if that's a one and a half star film, Jer. I don't know. Bad Boys 2. Prisoners. Hot Shots, par- Hot Shots Part Duh. Get out of here. That's not a one and a half star film. Finally. <sighs> Luke 87. Two and a half stars. Okay. The pornographers tackle sex, forbidden desire, and to a lesser degree, religious superstition in a post-war Japan. It's a bizarre and abstract film that follows the low-life protagonist, Mr. Otaga. I've I've read Ogata. I've read Otaga. I've read Subu. I've read them all. No one knows this guy's name. As he makes do-it-yourself porn films, has dealings in prostitution, has consistent financial troubles, and dysfunctional incestuous relationships. There were some funny scenes and some really inventive shots throughout the film. I found the film's tone to be a little all over the place, though, and the runtime could have been trimmed. There were some very uncomfortable scenes, too. That's kind of the point, though, right? Well, people uh, who really like the movie, like they love to throw out those taboos. Mm. They love to talk about taboos. Taboo. Taboo, like Luke 87. Do you think there's a Luke 88? Uh, is there an 86? These are the big questions. We don't get paid that kind of money. Uh, Luke gave five stars to Hereditary, mm-hmm. five stars to Prisoners. But, you know, things like Florida Project, Wicker Man, Ex Machina, also five stars. Very good. Um, there is a little strange, only two half star films. One is the circle with Tom Hanks and one is the captain underpants movie, which I feel like probably isn't fair. That's a kid's movie. All the one star ratings are like horror things like pet cemetery, the new one, which is a bad show. Wicker man, Nick cage, Freddy versus Jason quiet place. Actually, I, I'm on board with most of these to be honest. And then just things like the star Wars movies. Vegas Vacation? Nah, that's not one star. It's a high quality movie. What do you think about Vegas Vacation, Jer? I don't think about it at all. That's too bad for you. I think about it daily. Hmm. Semi daily. One of the uh, well, this might be a quote from the movie from a who loves this movie perspective. It's a quote from the film. Mm-hmm. We all want to leave the human race. We want to be free. Only society's taboos prevent us. That's uh, for who loves. Oh, oh, I see. Okay, before I get to Danny, I was I was just keep struggling on, uh, through Luke eighty seven. <laughs> hey, listen to some two star films, Jarrett. Dead Ringers, Phenomena, Along Came like, Polly, like like Argento the Phenomena. phenomena. Yeah. What? Dead Ringers, Phenomena, She Killed in Ecstasy, Serpent in the Rainbow, Maniac mm. Cop, A Dark Song. Wiener Oof. dog, Oof. Borat, oh, labyrinth. My Come wife. on, my <laughs> what? Okay, so wait, let's go to Danny. Do you think this is Danny like Game of Thrones? Danny, one of their favorite films is Passion of the Joan of Arc. That's cool. Yeah, so what else do they like? Tokyo Twilight, Barry Lyndon, The Look of Silence, Troll 2, Five they, they Stars. Just watched I feel the like that's your object of, of desire. Oh, the, the yeah. movie! The movie with two actresses. 
Oh, do you think they noticed? Someone uh, commented about it on uh, SoundCloud, actually. That they didn't notice also? That, or that, that, I'm that, that they not... thought it was very funny that you did not know. Uh, how could you know? How? How could you know? How indeed. Okay, wait. Last up, Danny gave Mandy five stars, but here's some half-star films. Uh, the Scorpion King? That's not fair. That movie's good. It's a good show. Uh, the rest of these are boring. Okay. Whatever. But how, how could how could you know? Come on. Got any more thoughts on this pornographer? No, it's like I said. I feel like it's fine. It's just not my jam, baby. You know. And I think it's wonderful. But maybe yeah. uh, maybe it's a builder. Maybe you got to come back to it uh, after a, for a second visit. Maybe like fifteen years from now, and you'll be like, "Yeah, I'm a hardened creep now." I can take this. I want more of it. Right in my veins. It's possible. You have to you'll have to tell me if that's true or not, but we'll no. see. No. I'm telling you it is true. Oh. Okay. After the break, the boathouse ropes break and we just keep on floating out onto that sea watching some pornography with oh, our gosh. with our real dolls. I wish that's how we went out. We could. <laughs>